with all these expensive weddings comes a lot of wedding advice. And a lot of that advice happens to be on the internet. And a portion of that internet is TikTok, Rachel. And I know you have some feelings about TikTok. But there's a specific video that I wanted to show you. I wanted to watch together as a family. And I wanted to get your reaction. <laughs> Are you okay with this? I can't wait. Okay, here is some of the worst wedding advice I've heard. Okay. Let's go. So I wanted to share with you the best wedding advice of all time. The second that you get engaged, open a credit card. Mm. Now, I know what you're going to say. I already have a credit card. Of I don't course. Care. Get a new one. Of course. Get one that's running a promotion. But what you're going to do is you're going to put every single wedding expense you ever have on that card. Even if the vendor charges like a 2% credit card fee, pay the fee. It is worth it. Seriously. Um, we got a ton of bonus points. We put everything on that card because we already have cash saved. And so I think a lot of people think like, well, let's just pay with cash. Then we're not in debt, right? But you already have the cash. So we just use it to pay off the credit card every month. But we're still getting miles. And that's like where the money really is. So then when you have all of these miles, you use it to literally book the honeymoon of your dreams for free. There okay. Oh, there's so much there to unpack, Rachel. We could we could sit here all day. I know, but it's the mindset. That is so... It's a mindset. That's a good point. That's so normal. This like, is the normal is... cultural... Yes. Most people listening and watching go, I don't get it. What was wrong with that, uh-huh. that advice? That's true. Yep. yep. Yeah. Use the points. Go on the free vacation. It's and all it's work all out. all going to work out. It's even if you have the cash. That'd be okay. That was the wildest part. They've got the cash to do it, apparently. And she says, even though you have the cash, put it on the card. Here's the thing. This And this is tried and true. It's always been true because there's been study after study after study that when you choose to spend someone else's money, naturally you are going to spend more because there is not an emotional connection to the money you're spending. So as you're planning this wedding and putting everything on the credit card, you're like, well, yeah, 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 let's do that. Or the, you know, that dress, the dress, it's like mm, $800 more. It'll be fine because we're going to get the points. That's and we're gonna, future Rachel's they, they, problem. They start, you start to justify, you really do, these these transactions and the expenses. And, and, and doing a little bit more is actually better. I'd rather spend more because I'm going to get the airline miles on the back end. So it's going to be fine. And the crazy thing is when you look, especially at wedding budget, the average wedding is $34,000. And you give yourself any leeway emotionally to say, oh, we can, we can spend a little bit more. How much more thousands and thousands and thousands that you're probably going to spend, again, because there's just not that, there's not a feeling of, okay, that's my money leaving. So you are to get a plane ticket to Cancun. And I'm like, listen, plane, it's expensive right now. I get it. Sure. But, but it's not thousands that, of let's dollars. Let's just say a thousand. Let's say it's, a, let's say it's $500 there, $500 okay. back. Two people, it's $2,000. I guarantee you they spent more than $2,000 because of the idea, oh, okay, well, well, we're going we're gonna to get some on the back end. It's oh, fine. yeah. And then well, my other, can I just go one more, George? Please, all and day. And I know everyone's like, oh, and this doesn't, I don't feel this way. This is how I, this is one of the reasons that I really just don't like, I don't like the whole industry of credit cards. Because in order to get those miles, in order to get those points, it's not because MasterCard is like this generous, you know, entity, and fun. they're like, you know what, you've been just so great, so I'm gonna just give you, give you something. They have trillions of dollars, like billions, billions. I'm gonna say trillions. I don't even know if that's true, but billions we can say for sure of dollars for people that don't pay their credit cards mm. off and are paying interest. So the people that are mismanaging their money, you get to go get your seven hundred dollar plane ticket paid for. But and I'm like, it's gross. Like, that doesn't I, feel good. It does. Well, to me, it does. I'm like, you know what? The whole it, gross. Can I just use my money and like stay away from? Like, I don't even want to yes. participate. I don't want to participate. So don't I know be a part that, of that system. I don't like it. I don't like wow. it. Wow. Well, we dug into this on the Fine Print podcast that we did, and we interviewed an ex employee at Capital One, who was overseeing one of these programs. And here's what she told me. The average credit card has 30 different price point and reward tiers, and that's on purpose. They mm-hmm. want it to be confusing and overwhelming, and they do 10,000 experiments. That's a direct number she told me on customers. You are a hamster in the maze, and you get to the cheese, and you think, I won. Yeah. I won. I got airline miles. I won. And then you zoom out, and you're a hamster in the maze, on the wheel, in the cycle yeah. of trying to get more points to go on your next trip. And I just go... Dude, become your own cashback program. Save up for your trip. 
I'll teach you how to budget. We can yes. do this on our own and yep. not have to hope for some miles to come through. And the fact that she said, and you get those airline miles, and that's where the money really is. And I'm like, your airline miles are worth $0. You yeah, can't yeah, cash yeah. those out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can cash money out of your bank, but your airline miles, 100,000 miles, we don't. where does that get you? That's not 100,000 miles of travel. That's an arbitrary number that these credit card companies use to confuse you. Yeah, yeah. If they were so generous, they would just say, all right, 2%, it's going to be full cash back. Here's $2,000. They make it confusing on purpose to get you to spend and spend and spend. To spend more and more. Don't do this. And only 48% of Americans, so you know, a little less than half, pay off their credit card every month. So you hear mm. people say, you know, well, I pay I mine off. Yeah. yeah, half of those people that say that and that's the problem with advice like this is she's saying a blanket because I can manage my credit card spending well. Yeah. Everyone should go get a credit card. And then half of America is in credit card debt Average carrying 68, a balance. Average or I'm sorry, $6,800. Mm. So almost $700. Seven, I'm sorry, gosh, $7,000. Wow. And and I'm like, you know, and, and the credit card arguments, because I'm like, the math, like, okay, get it. Like, I, sure. Yeah, you spend that, you get, okay, the, yes. On the, on the, sheet of paper I'm like yes that 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 but again what you don't take into account is everything else we've been talking about of how much more you're spending how much you're just in the rat race of them knowing you better than you even know yourself um and it's and then you know and I know some people use their credit card to make ends meet they literally do not make enough to live and so that's one reason they use which we would say hey You've got to cut expenses, and you have to earn extra money. You can't con- continue to live in the negative. Can't keep digging the and hole and win long term. Yes. Yeah. And then the other is just buying a bunch of stuff. I'm like, and, it, and then you end up with almost a seven thousand dollar balance on average oh, yeah. for people. And I'm like, and it's and I think about our min- the minimalists, some of our friends. And I'm like, it is. It's it's just it's just this American standard of what we expect to live like, mm-hmm. and we don't expect to live like this. We're gonna do anything in our means possible because. This is the expectation. I'm like, who set the bar? Who decided that? The who- credit card companies did. <laughs> Sorry, and here's the truth. You can't spend your way into a meaningful life. No, And you gosh. sit there with your credit card and you spend. Look at your transactions. How many of those were wants versus needs? Don't tell me you only spent it on gas. Listen, you're having some fun. And that's okay, but that stuff's going to have you if you're not careful. And you're going to be sitting there with credit card debt, hoping for some airline miles so that you can go to Cancun. Pay for your own dang honeymoon. We'll teach you how. We can do this all day long, dude. You don't have to wait on Capital One.